the tree of life consists of three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Eukaryotes are more related to archaea than bacteria. Eukaryotes are further classified into protists, fungi, plants, and animals. Each of them will be talked about in future videos. This video will focus on comparing the three domains of life. Bacteria and archaea are prokaryotes that lack nucleus, whereas eukaryotes have nucleus enclosed in nuclear envelope. Prokaryotes also lack membrane enclosed organelles that are found in eukaryotes. However, only bacteria has peptidoglycan in their cell walls. And only certain archaea are found in extreme environments such as high temperature. As a result, their membrane lipids contain ether linkages, which are more stable than the ester linkages found in the membrane lipids of bacteria and eukaryotes. Both bacteria and archaea have circular chromosomes, whereas eukaryotes have linear chromosomes. However, archaea resembles eukaryotes in many aspects of molecular biology. Bacterial chromosomes don't have telomeres, whereas some archaea have telomeres, which are repetitive sequences at the end of chromosomes that acts as buffer against progressive shortening of DNA during replication. However, only eukaryotic chromosomes are wrapped around histones. In terms of transcription, bacteria only have one kind of RNA polymerase, which transcribes DNA into RNA, whereas both archaea and eukaryotes have several kinds of RNA polymerases. Eukaryotic DNAs contain introns, which are long stretches of non-coding DNA found between coding regions. Some archaea also has introns, whereas bacteria rarely have introns. In terms of translation, both bacteria and archaea have 70S ribosomes, which are RNA and associated proteins that function to synthesize proteins. Eukaryotes have 80S ribosome. The initiator of protein synthesis in bacteria is informal methionine whereas it is methionine for both archaea and eukaryotes. Lastly, only bacteria are inhibited by antibiotics, whereas archaea and eukaryotes aren't. Next, I'm going to talk about different nutritional modes found in organisms. Organisms that need only carbon dioxide or related compounds as carbon source are called autotrophs, whereas organisms that require at least one organic nutrient such as glucose to make other organic compounds are known as heterotrophs. There are two types of autotrophs. Photoautotrophs derive their energy from light, including cyanobacteria, plants, and some algae. On the other hand, chemoautotrophs derive energy from inorganic chemicals, such as a group of archaea called sulfolibus, which derive energy from hydrogen sulfide, as well as nitrifying bacteria, which derive energy from ammonia. There are also two types of heterotrophs. Photoheterotrophs derive energy from light, but requires organic compounds for carbon. Photoheterotrophs are unique to certain aquatic and salt-loving prokaryotes, including purple non-sulfur bacteria, green non-sulfur bacteria, and heliobacteria. Lastly, most organisms are chemoheterotrophs, which requires organic compounds for both carbon and energy source. Chemoheterotrophs includes most prokaryotes, most protists, all fungi, all animals, and some plants. In the last section of this video, I'm going to compare sexual life cycles of eukaryotes. A life cycle is the generation-to-generation -generation sequence of stages in the reproductive history of an organism. The alternation of meiosis and fertilization is common to all organisms that reproduce sexually. However, the three main types of sexual life cycles differ in the timing of meiosis and fertilization. In most fungi and some protists, each haploid cell grows by mitosis into haploid multicellular organism, and haploid adult produces gametes by mitosis. Then, fertilization of gametes create diploid zygote. However, zygotes is the only diploid stage, and there is no multicellular diploid stage. The zygote produces haploid cells by meiosis, which develops into adult organisms and the life cycle starts again. In animals, meiosis produces gametes, which undergo no further cell division before fertilization. Gametes are the only haploid cells in animals. Gametes fuse to form a diploid zygote that divides by mitosis to develop into a multicellular deploy organism. Lastly, plants and some algae exhibit an alternation of generations. 
Their life cycles include both a diploid and a haploid multicellular stage. The diploid organism called a sporophyte makes haploid spores by meiosis. Each spore grows by mitosis into a haploid organism called a gametophyte. A gametophyte makes haploid gametes by mitosis, and fertilization of gametes results in a diploid sporophyte. Then the life cycle starts over again.